Hi guys, it's Quinn here. Even our greatest scientists don't understand the YouTube algorithm, but for some reason it seems to like it when you guys hit the like button. So if you appreciate my content, click like so that YouTube actually remembers to notify people when I upload. It has been often said that nature is cruel. All life on Earth is believed to have evolved from the same single-celled organism. Over the course of 3.5 billion years, those single cells diversified, multiplied, became multiple-celled organisms, developed organs, bones, and limbs. Life eventually filled every niche on the planet, each species learning to survive in its own way while constantly being tested by Mother Nature. But the cruelest fact about life has always been that in order to survive, it must feed upon itself and compete against itself. Life consumes life, and there are many ways of doing it. A butcher bird is a type of bird found mostly in African and Eurasian countries. It is a type of bird known as a shrike. Once a shrike captures its prey, it impales the body upon sharp thorns or spikes. This allows the shrike to bit by bit tear the flesh from the creature it has captured, eating it in small chunks. These birds are also known to be territorial. They defended their acclaimed areas against rivals. The idea of a strike has been used in fiction multiple times, but Dan Simmons' Hyperion, in my opinion, makes the most interesting use of the attributes of the strike bird within a fictional creature. I've made several videos discussing the Hyperion Cantos. You can find those videos in a playlist linked in the description. The Hyperion Cantos is an epic science fiction series following in the footsteps of the work of Isaac Asimov, Frank Herbert, and Jack Vance. In the Hyperion Cantos, mankind forms an interstellar hegemony after Earth was destroyed and an experiment gone wrong. The hegemony would eventually connect at least 200 worlds. Fat line connections allowed communication between worlds, while what was called Farcaster technology allowed for instantaneous travel between connected planets. There were many humans who lived outside of the influence of the hegemony, such as the Ousters, and many inhabited worlds not connected by Farcaster or Fatline. Such worlds were known as Outback Worlds. The world Hyperion is, of course, an outback planet. The world is Earth-like and contains three continents, Equus, Aquila, and Ursus as well as a single small moon. The sun of Hyperion was said to shine brighter than the sun of Earth, though it was smaller in mass. Hyperion was also known to be one of the nine labyrinthine worlds, but we will talk more about that in another video. Other than this, Hyperion had two other things that made it an astounding world. The time tombs, structures of unknown origins which emitted anti-entropic fields, the tombs seemed to be moving backwards in time. And of course, the creature sometimes called the Lord of Pain, the Shrike. It was vaguely man-shaped, but in no way human. It stood at least three meters tall. Even when it was at rest, the silvered surface of the thing seemed to shift and flow like mercury suspended in mid-air. The reddish glow from the crosses set into the tunnel walls reflected from sharp surfaces and glinted on the curved metal blades protruding from the thing's forehead. Four wrist, oddly jointed elbows, knees, armored back, and thorax. I've covered the Shrike and its incredible abilities already in this video here. The Shrike's appearance itself is terrifying enough until you find out what it actually does once it decides to make you its victim. Like the Shrike butcher birds I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the Hyperion Shrike also impales its prey upon spikes, using the glistening metal thorns of its tree of pain. Shimmering, mirage-like, a tree of steel thorns appeared out of the haze and a sudden dust storm of ochre sand. The thing seemed to fill the valley rising at least 200 meters to the heights of the cliffs. Branches shifted, dissolved, and reformed like the elements of a poorly tuned hologram. Sunlight danced on five meter long thorns, 
Corpses of ouster men and women, all naked, were impaled on at least a score of these thorns. Other branches held other bodies. Not all were human. The final tree, or the tree of pain, is a key part of the Shrike legend among those who worshipped him as the Lord of Pain. When the Shrike chose not to completely destroy its victims outright, he brought them to this tree. The tree itself does not truly exist as a physical tree. It is eventually revealed to be an ultra-advanced simulation. The victims he chose to impale were brought to his Shrike palace and neurally plugged into his simulation. The pain he put them through was exquisite. They eternally suffer the torment of the impaled, just as fully as if they were real, only without the eventual release of death. There were endless victims impaled upon the Tree of Pain. The Shrike's motivations are largely mysterious. Its power seems almost godlike, and its cruelty is unmatched. Perhaps one of the most terrifying things about the creature is its seeming indifference. It does not seem to feel pain or fear or happiness or empathy. It merely acts to work towards its strange goal. More about the Shrike's motivations are eventually revealed in the series. But the essential horror of the Shrike arrives from the fact that for most of the time, we have no idea why it does what it does, or wants what it wants, only that it is capable of great and terrifying things. For more on Hyperion, check out the Hyperion playlist found on my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, make sure you like and subscribe for more science fiction lore.